Welcome to all the uh, class 12 students of Odisha to my class. Today's uh, discussion topic is electrochemistry and it is a very important uh, chapter so far as uh, the examination and entrance test are concerned. So, in the introduction, uh, I would like to say that uh, energy is the need of the hour and it is uh, extremely essential both for a developed as well as a developing country. So, you know, so in our daily life, we uh, use so many electronic gadgets and devices which make the use of the cells. So, the cells means actually in biology you use a term cell where uh, it is there that uh, living things uh, they contain cells, but here the cells means the batteries in fact. So, that the principles of electrochemistry, uh, it has an astounding applications in the field of science. So, you know the cell phones you are using nowadays, so they use the long life alkaline batteries and the digital cameras we are using the lithi lithium batteries and uh, in hearing aids also and in digital watches all these devices electronic gadgets make the use of the principles of electrochemical uh, devices el electrochemical principles where power is generated through a chemical reaction. So, that is why so the in the uh, in the energy crazy society now so all are searching for the new source of energies renewable and forms of energies so now we shall go to the definition of the chapter that uh, in fact it is very simple definition is here so electrochemistry deals with the interconversion of two forms of energy one is your electrical energy another is chemical energy so, uh, we can uh, interconvert the two forms, so as per our need. So, on and the device used for such interconversions are called, so the, the device are called cells. Uh, so, so, these are called the cells. So, next, ne next we shall know, so the types of cells we use uh, for this purpose. So, first of all is an electrolytic cell. So, what is an electrolytic cell? So, uh, elect in, in an electrolytic cell what happens? So, there is a non spontaneous uh, reaction is carried out by passage of electricity. So, uh, so this, this, uh, these are uh, wide range of applications in uh, preparing the metals uh, highly electro, electro positive metals and highly electro positive non metals. So, even some compounds like uh, sodium hydroxide, sodium carbonate, sodium hydrogen carbonate. So, all these are synthesized through these elect electrolytic cells. Also, there is refining process, electroplating, all these applications find through these electrolytic cells. And uh, so, in fact, the components of electrolytic electric cells is very simple. So, if, if I will draw a diagram for that, so this will be an electrolytic cell. So, where there are two metal strips are there, and here there is an and it is externally con connected to a battery, to a uh, source of battery and key suppose here, this is the, so this, this uh, the liquid inside is called an electrolyte, electrolyte and these two are the electrodes and this is a DC supply, DC supply of power. and uh, this is an electrolyte and these are th and, and this, this one is called in fact the anode where oxidation occurs, we shall know in detail and this is the right one is called a cathode where reduction occurs. So, we shall go in detail about these uh, electrolytic cells and uh, so this is what uh, the basics and uh, that is another this is an electrolytic cell and here it is a electrolytic cell where the passage of uh, the DC power uh, bring about uh, a chemical reaction and the required activities that is been uh, found uh, at the metal and the solution interface. This will come across uh, this products of electrolysis and so and so. So, another type of cell is uh, electrochemical cell. So, in, in this uh, electrochemical cell what happens? 
So, a, sp uh, a spontaneous reaction brings about electricity or electrical energy. So, a spontaneous reaction, uh, so that, that, that what happens? In fact, the decrease in free energy of the spontaneous reaction becomes the driving force for the production of electricity. So, that is the key uh, fact uh, in uh, the functioning of an electrochemical cell. So, I am repeating the decrease in free energy of the spontaneous reaction is responsible for producing the what the uh, uh, the electrical energy and uh, you, uh, you know that uh, in our cells in our body even all the neurotransmissions that means the signals uh, uh, from cells to the brain and uh, vice versa all these through the these are called electrical impulses they are carried out through the principles of uh, electrochemical cells so this is uh, the beginning so, next uh, we shall go, we shall know what are the conductors, what are the conductors. So, these are the very important terms we shall come across conductors, you know all you know come across the term conductors. So, you know conductors are the substances you know they are capable to carry the electricity through them. So, these are uh, the, and and the, uh, the the substances they do not they do not allow electricity to pass through them. They are called insulators. There is very simple division between the two. So you can take uh, you, uh, a piece of metal is a conductor, a piece of wood is an insulator. So next uh, we shall go through the types of conductors. In fact, the conductors are two types. One is one is metallic, or they are also called electronic conductors another is this is uh, uh, non metallic or or electrolytes they are all electrolytes and uh, or we can say electrolytic non metallic or the we can say electrolytic conductors another electro these are in fact non non metallic conductors and these are uh, electrolytes. So, in uh, and, and the uh, the simplest difference between the two, uh, the metallic and uh, electrolytes or electrolytic conductors, is in metallic conductors, electrons are the charge carriers. Are the charge carriers. So here, free ions. Free ions are the charge carriers. So, this is the essential difference between the two types of conductors. So, metallic and uh, electrolytic. So, here the electrons so you can say free electrons are the charge carriers and they are the free ions are the charge carriers. So, one more difference is there. So, far as temperature is concerned. So, the conductance or the conductivity decreases rise of temperature when temperature rises conductivity decreases for metallic conductors, but here in for these cases. So, when temperature, so I am writing in temperature you will better know this temperature, when temperature rises the conductivity increases here. So, we can in this way you can distinguish two. So, that is an explanation for this why there is a fall of conductivity with rise of temperature in case of metallic conductors. This is in fact due to that uh, we can imagine a metal to be consisting of uh, that uh, positive charges embedded in a sea of mobile electrons in sea in ocean of, or therefore, we we'll call it that electron gas model or electron C model uh, in metallic bonding. So, what happens the kernels the positive the positively charged ions uh, called the kernels in the metal. So, they when the temperature rises the kernels start vibrating about the mean positions. So, which obstruct the flow of electron. So, for which resistance increases conductance decreases. So, that is why rise of temperature uh, uh, lowers the temperature, but in case of uh, electrolytes or electrolytic solutions when temperature rises the inter ionic effects that means, the opposite charge ions. So, their interaction becomes uh, lower minimized. So, for which their movement or uh, inside the solution becomes faster. 
so their conductivity increases. So in this way, you can uh, distinguish between the, uh, distinguish between the two types of conductors. One is the metallic, and another is elocalytic. So, and uh, then another, another term we use uh, to uh, electrolytes uh, in case of uh, non-metallic conductors. So uh, we we distinguish uh, you know, two types. One is uh, electrolytes, another is non-electrolytes. Electrolytes. Uh, what are electrolytes? Electrolytes. So, electrolytes means they, they uh, allow electricity to pass through them both in their molten state or in their aqueous solution. So, they allow electricity to pass both molten and aqueous solution. So, allow current. So, these are these are all the exam all the acids, all acids, bases, and salts come on come under this category of the electrolytes and what are the non electrolytes what are the non electrolytes these are non electrolytes non electrolytes so they do not so uh, uh, either uh, either in their molten state or in their uh, aqueous solution now that means uh, you melt them or put in uh, in water to they make their solution so they will ne never conduct electricity this is in fact due to non availability of free ions so electrolytes so there is no free ions free ions free ions are not available are not available free ions are not available so do they do not conduct electricity so what are these examples so examples are your 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 sugar urea so these are the examples of the non electrolytes so so now we distinguish between the electrolyte and non electrolyte so, so these are the uh, basics uh, to uh, entry to enter into the to enter completely into the chapter next uh, we shall go to the most important aspect of this chapter that uh, where our focus will be more is on the term conductance the term conductance so in fact uh, the literal meaning of conductance is the ease with which a conductor can carry current or electricity or carry the charge so that is uh, the conductance so when it will when it will carry the con uh, electricity or the charge easily when the resistance of uh, for the flow of charge will be minimum so so this is one type of definition that is qualitatively we can define that the conducting uh, the ability the ability of a conductor to carry charge carry charge is conductance or we can say the ease of flow of charge or we can say the ease of ease of flow of charge is a measure of conductance but quantitatively this is simply reciprocal reciprocal of resistance that means lower the resistance higher the conductance if we will designate conductance as c so this will be 1 upon r this is your conductance reciprocal of resistance so suppose uh, we will say that uh, copper and a, cop a piece of a cop piece of copper wire is a better conductor than a piece of aluminium wire so while we we uh, what wearing uh, we make wearing of our home we uh, usually uh, make the use of the copper wire for but better uh, facilities of electricity and, and for better um, the li life life uh, lifestyle of uh, what the longevity of the electrical appliances so that's why the copper is used so because it offers less resistance for the flow of uh, charge so for it is a better conductor and uh, what will be the unit here what will be the unit so here unit will be you know resistance is measured in ohm so it will be ohm inverse or sometimes it is called also called mo mho but the si unit is si unit is simon s i e m e n simon designated as s it is many times it is asked what is the si unit of conductance the si unit of conductance is simon that means 1s 1s is equal to 1 
ohm inverse. So, this is what is the conductance. So, the next is uh, uh, next we shall go to there that uh, the another term the another term that is known as the specific conductance specific conduct conductance or conductivity. This is so we shall you make the use of this thing specific conductance and it is designated by this this type of letter this is called kappa k a p p a this is not called k this is kappa this is pronounced as kappa kappa stands for speci specific conductance or conductivity so we can uh, define it by from from uh, the ohms law from ohms law now we shall make a mathematical formulation of the specific conductance starting from ohms law so you know according to ohms law that the uh, resistance of a conductor is directly proportional to the length of the conductor and inversely proportional to the area of cross section of the conductor if you will combine the, these two with a proportionality constant so i can write it this way this is so here this this uh, this this is called this is called in fact rho rho it is from rho so what is this this is your specific resistance or resistivity of the conductor so this rho is called this so i will simply make a what uh, that means exchange so this i will come bring this to down here and this one by r so this is a very important expression this is a very important expression here and this reciprocal of specific resistance is called your specific conductance and you know 1 by r is already conductance and this l by a comes here so this is a new term we shall use here this is called the cell constant cell constant this is called the cell constant l by a so we can write so it is there already in the slide this is we can write that this kappa is equal to c into l upon a that means specific conductance or conductivity is the product of the conductance and cell constant of a cell so uh, from this uh, we can now uh, make a a definition of this specific conductance or conductivity we can make a definition of this so what is that when we can write when l is equal to 1 cm and a area of cross section is equal to 1 cm square then your kappa will be equal to c because this will be 1 cm divided by 1 cm square this will come out to be c that means so how can you define uh, specific conductance or conductivity so conductivity is equal to the conductance of a shell having unit length and unit area of cross section so in this in that we can, we can uh, define conductivity or we can say the uh, kappa is this is this is the conductance of 1 centimeter cube of a conductor 1 centimeter cube that means uh, if if this is the area 1 cm and this is area of cross section and this is your what 1 cm and uh, this is 1 cm square this area this front this 1 cm square then this will be 1 cube conductance 1 cube conductor is your specific conductance or conductivity so in that way we can define but in case of solution and in case of solution the ions are the charge carriers so for solution this is this is true for metallic conductors so but in case solution in electrolytes in electrolytes in electrolytes kappa is the conductance 
of all all the ions in one CMQ or one CC of solution. In case of electrolytes, in case of electrolytes, so this is for for, for metallic conductors. In fact, in fact that is true for one CM uh, cube of uh, conductor. We can take uh, and we can uh, we can uh, separate the two electrodes at one CM apart, and uh, that is the area of cross section of the. 1 cm and suppose that will be 9 cm distance so it will 9 cm cube and so we can also make in that way also. But anyway, so the in case of electrolytes we shall basically deal with electrolytes. So, uh, specific conductance is the conductance of all ions in 1 cm cube of solution and always you may refer at, at a given temperature, at a given temperature because you know conductance is largely influenced by temperature also. So, this is uh, this conductance and uh, we can we, I can also tell you now the the factors we can generalize here what are the factors influence the conductance factors factors influencing conductance in general. So, one will be nature of nature of conductor nature of concentration in case of concentration another is temperature. So, later on we shall go a little bit detail on it and uh, this is uh, we shall go. Next another term we shall use uh, uh, in electrochemistry very frequently that will be your equivalent that will be your equivalent equivalent conductivity, equivalent conductivity this is designated as this, this is you see V your English capital V has been upside down turn down. So, that is in fact, this this this, this is called uh, this is your term is lambda and you know this is lambda. LMD, this is lambda and this is lambda and it, it, it does it what is what is equivalent conductivity. So, equivalent conductivity it is uh, definition is there that uh, the conductance of a solution of in fact, in a given volume of solution containing 1 gram equivalent of electrolyte at a given temperature is called the equivalent conductivity. That means, the two terms you see one is uh, the amount of uh, electrolyte should be 1 gram equivalent and the volume must be fixed and temperature must be fixed. So, the conducting power of all the ions present. Uh, so, when we put 1 gram electrolyte in a given volume of solution. So, that gives rise to a new term called equivalent conductivity. So, it is it is of more important than any 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 other term we use. So, because so, we will we'll let we will know, know in uh, uh, coming uh, uh, sub topics. So, from Faraday's laws that uh, when we pass a definite quantity of charge through a solution, it will give rise to a definite amount of uh, it will produce a definite amount of substance at the electrodes. So, in fact, where in fact, when uh, one Faraday of charge one Faraday of I am telling you one Faraday of charge or 96 500 coulomb of charge is passed through any electrolytic solution, it always produce 1 gram equivalent of the substance or we can say uh, irrespective of the nature of the electrolytes, 1 gram equivalent of electrolyte solution carries the same quantity of charge. So, therefore, it is more general to express uh, the conducting power of a solution uh, using this term that is equivalent conductance. So, therefore, it is important. So, now we shall make a we shall make a what a relationship we shall make a relationship between these two. So, we shall deduce a relationship between relationship relationship 
between kappa and this relation between specific conductance or conductivity and equivalent conductivities. This is very important. So, I have directly put that uh, in the uh, in the slide. So, I will derive it here. So, how we can derive it? So, let us take let us take V centimeter cube of a solution solution containing 1 gram equivalent of electrolyte. Let us take V centimeter cube. Now, we shall go back to the definition. So, what do we know? Conductance of 1 centimeter cube of solution is equal to kappa, is equal to kappa. You know it, this is specific conductivity, you know it. This implies conductance of V centimeter cube solution will be equal to kappa dot V. So, we can write lambda equivalent is equal to k into v. So, this is this is a equation. So, that is why in the definition of uh, uh, equivalent conductivity, I added a given volume of solution, because volume of solution has a big role to play on the value of the equivalent conductivity. So, we can express the equivalent conductivity of a solution as the product of the uh, specific conductivity and the volume of the solution. So, that is why in the definition, it is being written that the conductivity is measured for a given volume of solution. So, this is very important. Uh, so, far uh, we have derived the relationship between the specific conductance and equivalent conductance and uh, we have given it as a product of the two quantities, one is your conductivity and the volume of the solution. So, we shall expand little bit more uh, this equation and we will get the final expression for the equivalent conductivity. So, how you can do it? So, we shall we shall put a value in place of V here. So, suppose suppose we shall take suppose suppose the concentration of the of V centimeter cube solution is equal to let it be let it be n gram equivalent per liter. That means let it be n normal. What, what is normality? Normality is number of gram equivalent present per liter of solution. Suppose uh, the concentration of solution is n. So, we can write in this way. So, we can write n gram equivalent of electrolyte contains contains or contains uh, electrolyte is present in so, suppose it is present in 1000 centimeter cube of solution is not it. So, this uh, this is expanded for what is uh, the concentration is n gram equivalent per liter it implies that n gram equivalent present per liter of in 1000 uh, centimeter cube of solution. So, I have written in, in this way. So, this implies 1 gram equivalent of electrolyte will present in how much? 1000 divided by n centimeter cube of solution. So, our from the beginning uh, we are we are telling that the V centimeter cube contains 1 gram equivalent. So, now we equate we can equate V centimeter cube is equal to 1000 by n centimeter cube. We can replace it. This centimeter cube centimeter will cancel and this V will come out to be 1000 by n. So, now if we shall uh, replace this V by this term. So, what will get? Lambda equivalent is equal to 1000 kappa by n. So, this is the final expression for the equivalent conductivity. So, what is n here in fact? n in fact is the normality. So, where, where n is equal to 
normality of the solution. It is the normality of the solution. Normality is the number of gram equivalent of solute or here electrolyte present per liter of the solution. So, and, and you know this is, so this is the final and 1000 is there this is. and so from this uh, we can uh, have a unit of unit of equivalent conductivity what will be the unity unit here. So, this is uh, you know what is that this is uh, this is ohm inverse centimeter inverse this one the unit of kappa is this and normal and uh, this is uh, gram equivalent per liter per liter means uh, you can take it uh, centimeter minus 3 whole to the power minus 1 because it is in the denominator it will come up so it will be minus 1 so the final this will be ohm inverse centimeter square gram equivalent inverse so this is this is the unit of what equivalent conductivity so the si unit will be the si unit what will the si unit si will be simon meter square gram equivalent inverse so, this is the SI unit of equivalent conductivity. So, now this term is more useful to compare the conducting ability of solution. So, next uh, we shall go to know another term. This is similar to the equivalent conductivity, but uh, here the equivalent will be replaced by molar, will be replaced by molar. So, there will be molar conductivity, this absolutely same, both are same, this is denoted this molar conductivity, lambda m. So, the same, so the, so what will be its definition that uh, the conductivity of a solution containing, electrolytic solution containing 1 gram mole of an electrolyte in a given volume of solution at a given temperature the same the definition will be same almost. So, here uh, that that was 1 gram equivalent in case of equivalent conductivity it was 1 gram equivalent of electrolyte. So, here it will be 1 gram mole of electro, uh, electrolyte. So, that is the simple only difference and the same volume and and uh, the relation will be come out to the same the final relation will be will be 1000 kappa by molarity. this is and unit will be unit will be same si uh, this will be one unit will be ohm inverse centimeter square gram mole inverse and a, your si unit will be simon meter square gram mole inverse so these are the units of molar conductivity. So, depending upon the uh, the uh, unit of concentration uh, of the electrolyte in the solution, so we shall use either the term molar conductivity or equivalent conductivity. So, then uh, already I have discussed the factors uh, influencing uh, the conductance in general. So, now I shall proceed to the variation of these all these conductances types of conductances with dilution or with concentration. So, here the variation of molar conductivity with con, uh, with concentration. In fact, we shall start with uh, the uh, specific conductivity or uh, specific conductance or conductivity, we shall start with that. So, first uh, variation we shall we shall read variation of kappa with concentration. So, in fact, uh, the variation we, d we usually deal with the lowering of concentration that means dilution decrease of concentration. So, what effect uh, has on lowering of concentration or making the solution more dilute how the conductance varies. So, we read we basically study this fact in these uh, things. So, uh, uh, specific conductance specific conductance or kappa decreases with 
lowering of concentration or that is dilution. decreases. So, what is the reason for this? What is the reason? What is the reason? So, why that is? Because already we know that uh, the from the definition of the conductivity that the conducting power of the ions present in 1 centimeter cube solution refers to the conductivity or specific conductance. So, when dilution uh, comes into effect, what happens? the number of ions per unit volume decreases. The reason is very simple number of ions number of ions per unit volume decreases decreases. So, that is why the conductivity decreases because the number of ions also play an important role for the quantity of charge the solution is capable to carry. So, that is why this that decreases specific, conduct. but if uh, then and this is this is true this is true for both strong and weak electrolytes. So, whatever the electrolyte you take. So, this is true, but that means uh, specific conductance will fall with lowering of concentration or with dilution. So, now we shall study variation of molar conductivity molar conductivity with concentration. This is lambda m, we can say lambda m increases with dilution, increases with dilution. This is true for both strong and weak localites. This is true for both strong and weak localites. So, so why it is so? So, we shall go uh, later on. So, we will make a graph to know to study better the uh, the effect of uh, uh, dilution on the molar conductivity. So, for this so we shall uh, make the use of an equation. So, that is known as your uh, your Debye Hockel Onsager conductance equation. This is a very important, it is being taught in the higher classes, in honors classes. So, that equation is lambda m is equal to lambda m 0 minus a root over of c. This equation is useful for useful for knowing. Uh, the variation of uh, uh, equivalent uh, sorry molar conductance with dilution. So, now I will plot a graph here, plot a graph I will take uh, lambda m in this axis and root over of concentration c stands for here concentration c is uh, you do not confuse with, with, with conductance. So, this is the concentration here. So, so, I will uh, consider simultaneously a strong and a weak electrolytes. So, first of all this is the plot for this is the plot for sorry this will be like this. This is a plot for a weak let us say this is acetic acid this is weak electrolyte and another plot will be like this this is for KCL potassium chloride. So, these are two plots. So, if we closely investigate the two plots one for a strong localite that is KCL and another for a weak localite but for acetic acid, we shall find that that uh, mole at, a, at a given concentration at a given concentration suppose at this this point at this at a given concentration molar conductivity is always higher for the strong electrolyte and it is lower for the weaker electrolyte, weak electrolyte is less it is always high this is number one point. And number two both increases with this this is dilution this this part is dilution. This part contest concentration increases in the direction if you move positive direction of x axis this is increase 
in concentration and in the negative direction this is dilution. So, we are studying dilution only by lowering concentration both increasing both increasing that means molar contents increasing the in this direction they are increasing both are increasing number two number three but the increase is more significant in case of weak log that means there is a sharp increase in case of weak log light but there is a steady increase in case of strong log lights so these are the important observations so we can make uh, out of this graph so this graph so so this is the variation so both the first of all both for strong loaded so now we shall offer explanation for these such variations so so once again i am repeating what is happening both uh, for strong and weak yellow lights at a given concentration the molar conductivity is always higher for the strong yellow light and uh, both are increasing with dilution molar conductivity increasing for dilution but uh, the increase is more significant in case of weak yellow lights than for strong yellow lights so uh, for for uh, strong yellow light there is a steady increase it is because strong yellow lights are those which are almost in completely ionized state in all concentration almost that means dilution has very less effect uh, on on the concentration that means uh, dilution almost uh, practically bring no further ions into the solution but in case of weak electrolytes what happen dilution increases ionization for weak electrolyte this is a very important point for weak electrolytes dilution increases ionization that means more number of ions come into the solution since number of ions increases the conducting power increases and therefore the molar conductance uh, molar conductivity increases once again for strong electrolytes we can offer an another explanation that uh, with lowering of concentration or with dilution the interionic effects are relaxed that means the ions uh, get better freedom for their motion and that's that's why there is a decrease there is an increase in molar conductivity values so one more significant observation we can make from this graph also if we extrapolate this uh, lambda versus root over of c graph to cut the molar conductivity axis so it will it will cut here and what will this this will be lambda m0 lambda m0 but if you will go on extending this graph for weak log light you will find that it will never in intersect the molar conductivity axis so this will give rise to a very important implication in electrochemistry so we found that so here the uh, the curve for strong log light so that intersect the molar conductivity axis while that for weak log lights that does not so what it impl implies you see so this value is a limiting value this is a limiting value of this called called the called the molar conductivity at infinite dilution infinite dilution that means for strong yellow lights we can find this value limiting value of molar conductivity at infinite dilution by extrapolating by or by extending the uh, lambda versus root over c curve to intersect or the cut the lambda axis so that point of intersection and this this uh, this total distance this refers to your molar conductivity at infinite dilution but this is not possible in case of weak log lights so this result uh, is very important for other calculations so so this will uh, this will this will lead to in fact a new law new law so that now we, we can define we can make a definition also of what is uh, what is uh, molar conductivity at infinite dilution so the limiting value of uh, molar conductivity uh, of a solution which further does not change with uh, further dilution is called the molar conductivity at infinite dilution so it is also written uh, in this way also it's in some books it is infinite or lambda molar zero 
So, in this way we designate this. So, this will lead to a law known as Kohler's law. Kohler's law. So, this law will enable us to calculate this value that is being obtained graphically for the strong localites for weak localites also. So, weak localites we can calculate this using the Kohler's law. So, what or this law is also called is also called the law of independent migration of ions migration of ions. This is also called law of independent migration of ions. So, what happens? Uh, what this loss of Kohler's in fact, what he did? He uh, calculated uh, the uh, molar conductivity of uh, uh, molar conductivity of so many strong electrolytes at infinite dilution and concluded that that ions migrate or move in an electrolytic solution independently. That means, the motion of cations is not being influenced by the motion of anions in the solution or the presence of anions in the solution. In other words, we can say ions uh, uh, migrate independently to contribute independently towards the total molar conductance of the solution. So, so that is the essence of this law. That means, uh, when uh, uh, the dilution, so when uh, the ionization is complete and when it is complete, it is at infinite dilution. So, the ions make a definite contribution towards the total con conductance of the solution and the sum of the ionic conductances is uh, equal to the total molar conductivity of the solution. So, this is what the law states. So, there is a statement in the book also you can get it. So, that at infinite dilution when ionization is complete, each ion make a definite contribution to the total molar conductivity of the solution and the sum of the uh, ionic contributions is equal to the total molar conductivity. So, mathematically, so mathematically this mathematically Kohler's law we can state like this lambda m 0 at infinite dilution this is equal to nu plus So, this is the mathematical form. So, here this this plus this this indicates number of number of moles of cations in the equation and this is number of moles of anions and these are the ionic contributions these are ionic contributions. that means ionic molar conductances. Suppose, we shall take an if and I will take an example of barium chloride. So, barium chloride will ionize as barium 2 plus plus 2 cell minus here nu plus is equal to 1 and nu minus is equal to 2. See and this equation what will happen? So, I can write this even this in fact written like in this way. This is molar conductivity of barium chloride at infinite dilution. This is equal to B A 2 plus 0 plus 2. So, this is the expression for this. So, from this is. So, now we can utilize this law to evaluate. Uh, so, the three things. So, that that is we call the applications. We call the applications of Kohler's law. So, the number one application is number one is is your uh, determination of determination of molar conductivity. Uh, this is this is in fact this uh, law is applicable to all always weak electrolytes. So determination of molar conductivity at infinite dilution for weak electrolyte. Suppose suppose I will take a weak electrolyte. Suppose ammonium hydroxide. This is ammonium hydroxide. So this is weak electrolyte. So we shall uh, take three different strong electrolytes to evaluate this. So, what are this? So, this is in fact ammonium chloride plus this will furnish ammonium ion here. Molar conductivity of sodium hydroxide 
minus sodium chloride. You see, so here we can apply the Kohler's law because uh, the, we, we can split for the cation for the anion and here we can also split it for the cation, sodium ion and hydroxide ion and this way we can split. So, finally, we will get this uh, here uh, the uh, sodium ion and this uh, sodium ion they will be cancelled out and this chloride ion this chloride will cancel out. Finally, so finally you will get it as uh, ammonium ion plus OH minus ion. So, in this way, so any any we look at you take so you can use your uh, intuition to find uh, this and, and in, in uh, numericals. So, all these will be given. So, you will be asked to find out this or this will be the given this will be given and this will be and ask this anyway. So, the numericals will be like that. So, there will be few unknowns and few knowns. So, this is one application. So, number two application is your calculation of degree of dissociation. So, what is the degree of dissociation stands for? De degree of dissociation is what? It is known as alpha suppose. So, the fraction of eloclytes dissociated or ionized that means, number of ions in the solution at definite concentration we can say number of ions in the solution for 100 percent ionization for 100 percent ionization. So, this is the ratio since you know the number of ions is proportional to the conductivity. So, we can say that uh, this is lambda m at concentration c, this is lambda m concentration 0. That means, this is molar, con molar conductivity con at concentration c and this is molar conductivity at infinite dilution at infinite dilution. So, this ratio this ratio gives you the value of the degree of dissociation this is your degree of dissociation. So, knowing these values so we can ascertain the degree of dissociation of a weak electrolyte because weak electrolytes only undergo incomplete ionization in solutions. So, one more application we can make number 3 it is there that is the determination of the dissociation constant. So, let us take a weak acid suppose. So, this will dissociate like this H plus plus A minus. So, so this will be C alpha at a given point of time this is C 1 minus alpha. So, your dissociation constant dissociation constant K A will be equal to you know this is S plus concentration A minus concentration this is H A concentration. So, this will be uh, by rearranging we will get it C alpha square in 1 minus alpha you will get it this. So, simply put the values of alpha here C lambda m C by lambda m 0 square 1 minus lambda m C by lambda m 0. So, you can calculate this k. So, in this way we can use Kohler's law for the determination of these three quantities. So, this is very important for uh, problem solving point of view and I hope you all take care of all this from the books and uh, so this is uh, now the finish. Thank you.